I just stopped in on you. And the gold, same as usual. I shovel tons of this no good blue stuff to get just a little speck of gold. I always told you, come stop. You're only wasting your time. I shoveled a whole mountain away last year, and all I got was enough to trade for some liquor. But, Ginny, if this muck I shoveled away was worth two bits a ton, I'd be a millionaire. Yeah. And when it's wet, it sticks like glue. And when it's dry as dust, it gets in your eyes and your nose and your ears. I bet I've had a hundred ton of it. You know, if I could carry enough of this to make a respectable showing, I'd have it tested at the assay office. There's gold in it, but I've fitted a human that works to get it out. That's just what they won't know until they shovel it. If you'd only get a good test report, you might unload our claim on some green oil. Huh? Huh? That's just what I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just so it won't be a total loss, let's call this a christening. I christen this here claim Virginia City. <laughs> uh, I can see it's going to be a big city full of jackrabbits, sage hens, and rattlesnakes. Come on. We're starting bright and early tomorrow. For that assay office in Sacramento. How much gold do you think she'll run to the past? Just this other I'm testing. Have you got any more of it out there? The whole place is reeking with it. It's everywhere. Your food, your eyes, under your nails. <sighs> Let me show you something. Now, give me that. Got any more of this? I'd say I shoveled a million tons of that right over my shoulder. I bet more than that in my food. Yeah, we cursed that stuff day and night for four years. Well, you better go right back and apologize to it. It's virgin silver. Runs about $3,000 a ton. How much? Ask him. He's the new owner of this shop. Tell me, Silkron, how I bought your tobacco shop. Why are you in such a hurry to sell out so cheaply? I'm going to turn this gold into silver. Virginia City. Silver strike. Run $3,000 to the ton. Wait a minute. If it's as good as all that, I think I'll go with you. I don't smoke this stuff anyway. Hey, where is this Virginia City? Men, I offer you sympathy for the loss of your crop. But we people of Indiana have been flooded out before. First it's the Wabash, and then it's the Ohio River. But never so bad as this year. I wish I were a miracle man instead of just a plain lawyer. Some of these men present are tenants living on my land. Their loss is my loss. But I am ready to offer everything I have left, if that would help. That's good of you, Sawyer. But I have a suggestion which may solve the problem without calling upon you for help again. My uh, brother Danny brought an idea for me, which uh, in our present circumstances is practically an invitation handed to us on a silver platter. Read it to him, John. Here it is. Silver Bonanza, Virginia City. $3,000 to the ton. Prospectors from all parts of the country are flocking to the silver strike. Unlimited quantities of virgin silver are being extracted daily from the thousands of claims in and about Virginia City. Where well, is Virginia City? Six weeks from here by wagon, just inside of California. Let's go. Oh, no, I'm ready. Oh, wait a minute. There are conditions. It means hardship, suffering, battles about claims. You're a lawyer, John. You'll take care of that. One man might strike it rich while another may never find silver. Now, we've been neighbors. We've been friends. We've had success and we've had failure. If I'm to lead you, we'll stick together as one outfit. We'll share our troubles and we'll share our wealth. 
Now listen, you fellas are not going without me. Any of you that haven't any animals for the trip, call on me. I'm not leaving any stock behind. I can use a horse. You'll go better. How about the wagon? Virginia City, oh, you wait for me. I come from Indiana. Where's my banjo on my knee? <laughs> I came from Indiana with a banjo on my knee. That's why Virginia City, I grew up for the sea. It rained all night today, I left the weather, it was dry. The sun so hot, I rose and said, Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna. I came from Indiana with a banjo on my knee. <laughs> How's the newspaper business today? Well, you're fresh in all the news. John, you're up against a tough bunch. Well, we'll see about that tomorrow. Mm. That uh, young brother of mine with you again today? Well, yes, sure thing. Hey, Danny. Yes? Come out here. You know, that uh, brother of yours is the makings of a good newspaper man. I hope he doesn't bother you too much. Oh, no. No, he's a great boy. <laughs> hey, can I have this? What do you got there? I don't know. I found it inside. Hey, you can have everything in my shop, even the presses, if you can carry them, but uh, can't have this. Oh, I thought it was just an old piece of rope. Yeah? Well, it's my most prized possession. Gave me my name. You better leave things where you find them after this. Oh, don't blame him, John. After all, it's only important to me. Now, you know, when you once been a pilot on the Mississippi, this... Lead line means everything to you. The only thing we had to guide us on a pitch black night, feeling our way, steering that boat. My leadsman stood watch. This, over the side. <laughs> and he kept heating it out, touching the river bottom. And when these knots slipped through his fingers, well, he could tell how deep the water was, and he sang it out to me. <laughs> now, now, this knot is uh, Mark 1, which means a uh, fathom of water. Six feet to you land lovers. <laughs> and this, uh, this knot, well, that means deeper water, safer for piloting. <laughs> now, you uh, land lovers would call this second knot Mark 2. We don't. Oh, when my leadsman feels this second knot in his fingers, he knows we're safe. And he sings out, Mark Twain, Mark Twain. Ah, there's music in my ear. So I changed my name from Samuel Clemens to Mark Twain. So I could hear that sound the rest of my life. Mark Twain. Yeah. Too bad we landsmen haven't something like that to warn us. <laughs> you have. I tried to warn you in the paper. Mark, I should win that trial. We're in the right. Hmm. John, you're piloting your Indiana men through a court case tomorrow. Yeah. And you're in shallow water right now. I've heard you're humorous, but this is pretty serious. Yeah, that's just the point. When a judge permits his decisions to be written for him, what chance have you? Is that Judge Albion's record? Well, I knew him in California before he was a judge. And the people that are fighting you practically appointed him. But this is a jury trial. <laughs> well... <clears throat> If I were you, I'd see a fella named 
Brown. Yeah, he calls himself a jockey by profession, but uh, he fixes jewelry. But I don't have jewelry fixed. Brown does. For Hammond. Some things even a judge can't sidestep in law. I have your verdict all written for you. All you have to do is read it. Make it a good one. Yep. A sort of flower. Huh? They've always been well written. Where's Hammond? He's in there. He's busy with Judge Albion. I wouldn't have disturbed him. It cost you a couple hundred more than you figured. Johnson upped his hand. He to be foreman of the jury. Sure it was Johnson and it was up. You don't think I'd try that on you, Mr. Hammond? This is a jury trial. There isn't anything that you can take care of with a gun. I don't want you around that court tomorrow. John, our boys are ready to shoot up that court tomorrow. If you give the word. Say, I can take care of that jockey that Mark Twain told you about. You know, he's no bigger than I am. You're putting wrong ideas in this youngster's mind. That's no way to handle this. Well, with the case coming up tomorrow and the judge and jury both set against us, I don't know what we can do. That's just what I want to talk to you about. You permitted Danny to ride your racehorse Corsair several times. Now, uh, Danny tells me this jockey Brown used to come around and clock his speed and then pet the horse like a baby. Yeah, he wanted me to ask you if you'd sell him. He asked me. I told him he wasn't for sale. Sawyer, if Brown wants your horse badly enough to give us what we need, Will you give him up? Oh, I, I promised him to Danny for his birthday. Well, I'm willing. If it works. All right, Danny. You get hold of Brown early in the morning before I go to court. Tell him Corsair is on the market. Corsair is a wonder. Fastest horse this side of California. Fastest horse in California, too. I guess you're right. If I had him down to the Sacramento and San Francisco fairs this year, I'd clean up. Sure you would. Your brother says you got the right to sell him. Well, I have in a way, but uh, not for money. What does that mean? I want some information. You have it. Information? About what? That uh, jury you bribed for Hammond. All I want to know is how much you paid each man. I don't know what you're talking about. You're wasting your time, Brown. I'm giving you a chance to be on a fast horse and out of town. It'll be too late for you to change your mind after I go into that court today. If Hammond knew I talked... Hammond or anybody else couldn't catch a riding horse there. It's a fast horse, all right. Come on, Mr. Deal. All right. The foreman of the jury, 500. Mike Wilkins, 350. Mike Wilkins, huh? Yeah. Joe Belknap, the same. Party Sparks and the others, 200. He's yours. How soon before the trial begins? You'll have a good 20 mile start before anybody misses you. Gentlemen, I call your attention to a book written by a man named Noah. Not Noah the Bible, but a modern Noah, a purveyor of words, Noah Webster. From his book, I select a word not often heard in courts. The word is bribe. Here is the definition. Any gift or emolument used corruptly to influence public opinion. Now, bribery affects both the parties of the first and the second parts. Noah Webster further says, I object, Your Honor. Objections are same. I see no reason to bring up such a subject in my court. Where's Hamlet? In court. 
You'd better stay away from that. Your Honor, my reason is both relevant and material. And if the court will permit, I'll continue to lay the groundwork for further testimony. I now cite from a case of two years ago in the state of California, a case somewhat similar to this, a jury found against the defendant. Later, another jury sat in judgment against that jury. The foreman of the jury was found guilty of accepting a bribe of $500. Two others, 350 each. The rest of the jury sold out it per man. I strenuously object to this court being made a mockery. Objections sustained. Young man, I'll have none of those tactics in my court. Hereafter, you will confine your arguments to direct evidence pertaining to this case. Your Honor, I call your attention to a case well known in the bar country. You heard what the judge just said. You and your outfit clear out of here. Here we are, Hammond. John, I've got Hammond. Careful, John. Hammond, you better tell your man to put them down. Do as he says, Bates. Nice work, John. I couldn't have done it better myself. Take the witness stand. Thanks, Danny. I'm not a witness in this case. I'm a lawyer. Your Honor, when I refer to bribery, I have this man in mind. I'll ask the court to swear him in as my witness. Can't you see he's intimidating the court? I demand that you declare a mistrial in this case. And if that's it, this court declares a mistrial in this case on the grounds of intimidation and misconduct. Too bad we didn't win. Yeah, but we didn't lose. We've got a betting chance now. That's right. Maybe Judge Albion won't be around here much longer. Not thinking about uh, shooting him? No, that's not my game. Here, take a look at this. Well... Even if you did shoot him, it wouldn't make a better news story than this. Enough of these petitions for the removal of Judge Albion are being signed tonight. I'm taking them to Carson City asking for a new judge. Hmm. Think you'll uh, get sufficient signatures? Well, they're being circulated all over town, going like hotcakes. Hey, what's your hurry? This petition business calls for a special edition of our paper. We've got to get it set up right away. This is news! You certainly bungled my case today. Now, don't you worry. I'll know how that smart lawyer when that case comes up again. Hey, boss, look. The town's flooded with these things. And everyone's signing them. What is it? Just a petition asking for your removal as judge of this district. Hammond, we're through if that ever gets to Carson City. I'll be back in half an hour. It's the more, John. Yeah? At this rate, I'll get an early start for Carson City tomorrow. Oh, aren't you going to take me with you? Say, after the way you helped me today, I'm going to need you with me all the time. What's that? Keep away from that door, Danny.
Where did it hit you? I don't think so. I hope for your sake they didn't. And I think these belong to me. says his legs are paralyzed. Shot through the spine. He'll... he'll live. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. Danny insists I go on to Carson City. Says with you and the doctor looking out for him, he'll get along all right. That's right, John. You go ahead. We'll all look out for it, Danny. Thanks. Governor, these petitions for the removal of Judge Albion are signed by hundreds of Washoe County citizens. The evidence against Albion is clear and undeniable. His decisions are crooked and he permits his jury to be bribed. Young man, you're making grave charges which you'd better be able to prove. I have that proof. Albion and his gang won't stop at anything, not even murder. Are you willing to make these charges to the Attorney General and to the members of the Territorial Supreme Court? Yes, Governor. Virginia said he must have a new judge. Friends, in welcoming Judge Avery to Virginia City, I must uh, pause to make complaints against the uh, possibility of over-honesty in uh, court decisions. See, I'm a newspaper man, and if Judge Avery brings peace to Washoe County, there won't be any news, and my paper may have to suspend business. <laughs> <laughs> now, in behalf of our people and law-abiding citizens, the vast majority of whom are uh, assembled in this room without crowding the place, I present charming Miss Linda Avery. <laughs> Daughter of our distinguished judge, William H. Avery. Your esteemed citizen, Mark Twain, prepared us for this welcome party by advising us you'd all be here tonight. When Mr. Twain met my daughter, Linda, the first question he asked was, can you cook? He said, Virginia City has everything but a good cook. My daughter accepted Mr. Twain's remark as a challenge. So, as your new judge of Washoe County, I'm going to render my first decision. Linda, we will excuse you while you go into the kitchen and prepare the evidence. Perhaps I'm prejudiced in this case, for I have so many times tasted her delicious pancakes with honey. I, I shall enjoy tasting the evidence and uh, hope the young lady wins the decision. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
Well, what are you doing here? Since you're preparing the evidence for this case, I've appointed myself your attorney. You may need me to defend you. You better get out of here. I have work to do. Let me show you how to break them with one hand. Oh, no, thank you. I have enough. Right. <laughs> one more won't hurt. Oh, that's all right. Oh, cookies. You bake these? Of course. They're good. Thank you. Well, you're supposed to be on the reception committee. That's right. In your kitchen to prove I'm a cook, not an acrobat. Get up and let me down. You know, your father coming in here as a judge is even better than I asked for. Bringing you along was a great idea. With an honest judge on the bench, I won't be so busy from now on. Will you stop getting those good ideas with hungry people in there waiting for food? Maybe other evenings I won't be so busy. Promise? That's a promise. All right. Come on. Uh, sir? Hi. Well, social life of Virginia City seems to be uh, rising like the morning sun. Well, let's hope that it doesn't set in the same way. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Judge, to renew our association. I often think of the many happy days we've spent together in California. We've had some interesting cases back there, Herman. as well let him get it out of his system. <clears throat> well, play. Yes, now. New judge is certainly a remarkable man. Well, uh, who was at the party? Twain, Sawyer, Hammond, a few others. Nice little crowd. Anybody I don't know? Oh, yes, the uh, judge's daughter was there. But uh, she was out in the kitchen uh, most of the time. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, where were you most evening while she was in the kitchen? Say, did uh, Twain or Sawyer stop in here on the way home? Why? Were you the last one to leave? <laughs> well, uh, come to think about it, I guess I was. I wanted to have a little chat with that uh, new judge. The judge or the judge's daughter? Say, are you a mind reader? You've been sitting here all evening, and yet you seem to know everything that's going on. I don't have to be a mind reader. Look. <laughs> J. 
John, what does she look like? Oh, she's marvelous. She's riding handsome since that new judge come to town. Hammond will trim him down in court. Not if he figures on your help. There's the fellow that tells you what to do. I'll get him when he's alone. I won't be long. Mind if I go with you? Why, of course not. Well, he certainly isn't afraid of you because he's headed this way. Hi, handsome. How's the ladies, man? <laughs> you wait here. I'll be right back. But, John, I... I won't be a minute. Tom is yellow. Didn't even answer me back. I was just itching for him to answer me back. One word out of him and I'd have let him have it. I wasn't wrong, was I? No. I hope you didn't hurt your hand. You're ringing wet. Quickest <laughs> <laughs> fight I ever saw. You I heard, heard a crack? I looked, then a splash, it was all over. Give me a drink. Can't be rain, you're the only one that's wet. You keep your mouth out of this. That's good advice, Faith. You should have thought of that before you opened your mouth to John Storm. Funny, huh? The funniest thing I ever saw. And the first bet signed in Virginia City. Wait till Mark Twain writes this up. Say, that guy had a fist as big as a can. How'd it taste, Bates? How'd that one taste? Has anyone else got anything to say about this? I'm declaring myself right now. Given that lawyer, John Stone, till tomorrow noon to get out of Virginia City and take his crippled brother with him. If he's around this town tomorrow noon, I'm going to hunt him down and blast his head off. <laughs> Don't help me. I can take this next step alone. Help with Danny. <laughs> and that doctor said I'd never walk again. Come on now. Don't be afraid. I'll catch you if you fall. Fall? I'm not going to fall. Say, you just keep out of my way. You know, if you people let me alone, I could make it all the way across the room. You're making a fool out of that doctor. Hello, Mark. Come on in. Well, what's all this? So look, Mark, here's something for your paper. Now, let me do this alone. Well, let's see if you can make it over here. That's enough now. <laughs> That's a good day's work, Danny. Mark, you'll be walking one of these days. Well, he sure looks like it. <laughs> We'll do better tomorrow, won't we, Linda? Of course we will. Hey, come here. What's on your mind? Sit down. Now, I'm in a hurry, and uh, I need some first-hand information. If it's about the trial, I'd rather talk to you later. Yeah, well, this won't wait. Where are you born? Indiana. Mm. And your father's name? John Storm, same as mine. Attend uh, law school? Studied in the law offices of Judge Peterson, Indianapolis. Any uh, living relatives? Well, uh, my brother, Danny. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, how old was your father when uh, he died? Say, what do you want to know all this for? Well, I'm writing up your obituary. <laughs> It'll be a long time before you print that. Well, I'm not so sure about that. John, you can't go around knocking men like Bates into water frogs without taking measures to protect yourself. Shut up. 
Casey cleared himself yesterday in the Melodian Saloon. He gave you until noon today to get out of town. I forget you. Shut up. Now, I'm going to speak something about it. John, Mark's right. You must do something. Oh, half a dozen fellas told me about it last night. Well, Bates is dangerous, John. What are you going to do about it? Why, nothing, as long as he only fights with his mouth. Well, if you're not going to do anything, I'm going to see what Bates is going to do. John, you better strap on your gun. Bates to say John Storm's still in town. If he don't show up, I'm going up to his house to get him. My wife's against yours. You'll be leaving town before John Storm does. I'll take that bet. I'll hold stakes. You've got just about a quarter of an hour before noon. What's this? Your liquor bill. Take it out of my window. But, but you might not never come back. <laughs> <laughs> Bates hasn't left yet. He's out there in the bar doing a lot of talking. You better get him started. Go out there and tell him that I'm betting my horse against his. They never get John Storm. I still think you better pay me now. <laughs> Bates, Hammond says his horse against yours that you don't ever get John Storm. I'll take that one, too. You fellas all heard. I'll be back in ten minutes to collect those debts. Look, will you do stop your worrying? Oh, John. John, Bates is coming here. John, what are you going to do? You won't come here, will he? No. You're not going out there. I can't let him come in here. You can't go out there. I won't let you. John, please. No. Please don't go. You've got to listen to me. You can't go out there. It'll scare you. John. John Storm now. Mason, what's your gun? Yeah? Well, oh, come and get him. Keep your hands where they are. What's Wayne got to say today? Oh, the talk is a shoe. Linda might move to Carson City. Her father might get appointed to the Supreme Court. I hope nothing like that happens before he tries our case. I'd hate to take a chance on a new judge. Oh, Mark's guessing about six months ahead on that appointment. Hello, Hammond. What are you doing here? As you and I are to appear in court against each other, I thought it best to come over and see you. 
Anything that we have to say to each other can be said before Judge Avery. That's just what I want to talk about. I think before we go to trial, we ought to have a little understanding about a few matters. Well, if you insist, uh, will you step inside? Thanks. Call if you want me, Dad. Anybody else around the house? No. It's nice to see your brother recovering. That's not what you want to talk to me about. As a matter of fact, it's not. I'm here to make you an offer. Yeah? Judge Avery has ambitions to become a Supreme Court Justice at Carson City. Maybe that's something you ought to talk to Judge Avery about instead of me. On the contrary, it vitally concerns you and your case, which comes up before him. Hammond, I'm afraid you're talking over my head. My people are in a position to help Judge Avery get that appointment. Of course, you can see that it wouldn't be to his best interest to decide against us. Are you speaking in your interest or in the interest of Judge Avery? Neither. I'm talking to you for your own good. I'm offering you a chance to withdraw from the case. Is this an offer to uh, buy our mining claim? The offer is only for you to withdraw from the case. Because your men wouldn't have a chance of getting anything out of it anyway. That will enable you to take your brother back to Indiana. Where he can get the best medical attention. And as you are in line to become the judge's son-in-law, I'm sure you'd want to save him and you the embarrassment of deciding the case against you. Think this over and drop into my office tomorrow morning. Glad to see you, Hammond. How are you, sir? You've been somewhat of a stranger since we came to town. Uh, it's nice to see you again. I'll admit that I haven't been a very good neighbor. Won't you be seated? Thank you. Well, I see Mark Twain finally learned that you were slated for promotion. Yes, that was pleasant news to me. My people have been working on that for a long time. Of course, I knew that your assignment here in Virginia City was only temporary. Well, that's more information than I had. I haven't wanted to discuss these matters with you. There's a case of ours pending before you. Hello, Linda. Good evening, Mr. Hammond. I won't be away long, Father. Where are you going in such a hurry? John and I are giving Danny another lesson in walking. You know he has to learn all over again. With you for a teacher, you won't want to learn too soon. You have no idea how hard he's trying. I'll be back early, Father. Good night, Mr. Hammond. Good night. Good night. Judge. I hope you realize the importance of your decision tomorrow to my people. I imagine it's also important to John Storm and his associates. But I'm sure John Storm and his men aren't important to you, the way things stand now. Hammond, you're taking advantage of friendship to dare discuss a decision of mine before it is made. Discussing it afterward, Avery, will be too late. It's worth too much to us, and I'm instructed to find out about it. Then I was mistaken in thinking this was a friendly visit. Avery. You are too familiar with the methods of the Caledonia people not to realize you don't dare oppose them. You're not helping your case any with these tactics. You'll have to go about it in another way if you expect to win this case. I found out what I came here for. Good night. Howdy, John. Hello, Mark. Well, I hope Judge Avery decides in your favor today. Aren't you coming down to court? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been waiting for you to pass here all morning. Well, come on. Come on. <laughs> no, John, this may be your last law case out here. You're an optimistic fellow.
you boys get the horses down at the end of the street. Are you going alone? You do as I say. I'll take care of myself. Notice none of Hammond's men are in court. Hello there. John's already left for court. I know that. I just saw him go. Gee, are you that cheerful? I'm scared to death. Oh, did your father tell you anything? No. Was John worried? He, he wouldn't let us know. No, I suppose not. What do you think about it, Danny? I, I don't know. It... I'll see who it is. Linda! Everybody rise. His Honor, Judge William Avery. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Honorable William Avery presiding is now in session. Be seated. God help the people of the Territory of Nevada. The case called before the court is Caledonia Mining Company against John Storm and others in regard to title of certain mining claims. In this case, the plaintiff, the Caledonia Mining Company, has brought suit against John Storm and others, claiming title to a certain 40 silver claim, now filed in the name of John Storm and his associates. Basing my opinion on the evidence presented by both sides, and which I have very carefully examined, the court is now ready to render its decision. However, the court will rule first on the injunction granted the Caledonia Mining Company by my predecessor, Judge Albion. This injunction, halting work on the claims of John Storm and his associates, is hereby dissolved and canceled. Sawyer, we can open up the old hole again. <laughs> I knew John would bring us through. You better come on. Say, boys, he's had all the beef for one. Now it's over. In the matter of ownership of these claims, the court's decision is... Your Honor, I have discovered new evidence as vital to this case. It's a little late. The court's decision is in favor of the defendant, John Storm and his associates. 
and they are free to reopen their minds and resume operations. <laughs> You're under arrest. Don't leave this courtroom. you, Danny, they didn't get too good a start. Hurry up. I want that fire out. Doing the best I can, boss. Well, how long do we have to wait around here? You stop asking questions. You'll know in time. Well, I don't like this business. Dry up and do as you're told. Well, what I want to know is, what are we going to do with the girl? Will you keep your mouth shut? Are we going to stay here all night? Throw up your head. Stay where you are. Come here, Linda. 